to Jim Burns for sharing the pages. Um, all of these poems are, are written in the last 18 months since I moved to Barnard Castle from Henley on Thames and they do reflect on differences in the culture and the weather and all of that and also on what we mean by home when we keep moving around. So this first poem is dedicated to my mum who if she'd still been with us would have been celebrating her 90th birthday today and she complained that she'd moved house far too many times. So this is about me and about her. When I was a stranger, and even the child of strangers, when every day my mouth betrayed me, and my tongue tripped over these place names, when these streets had no map for me, when I was neither church nor chapel, when the woods outside the gate upped sticks and scattered to the hills above the town, when I outflew all the familiar birds, travelled round-eyed and white, an oak among cherry blossom. Then I had become work's gypsy. Like a wind-blown leaf, it journeyed me wherever it would go. And every time what was left behind was love and settlement. Um, so I, like Anne Graal, um, I come from the twilight zone known as the Midlands. Um, and uh, my husband's a Brighton boy. And we've spent many times discussing where's the north and where's the south and what's the north-south divide. And so um, this poem's about that without using the words north-south or divide. Um, and it's, I've read it, I think, before at uh, the West Garth and it's called Drawing the Line. Ruler it from Bristol to the Wash by way of Watford Gap. Or if not there, perhaps the sword dawn standoff where the Saxon meets the, ga the Dane, where white horse chalk gives way to clints and grikes, and outcropped rocks erupt from storybook hills, weathers watershed, where summertime and winter kiss and part. The picnic scarp where quiche goes lidded down as pies, and lunchtime's gravy into dinner, which is tea. The black pudding border, tripes extent, in ploughman's terms the Cheddar Cheshire line. The disparity of champagne socialists and food bank pragmatists. Where butterings of smug knife edge into a scrape of hope. The cusp where snobbery spontaneously inverts, a cancer atlas colour shift, the Oxbridge cliff, a break in aspiration that elusive isogloss where pronunciation's not so much received as thrown like pots or punches. The millstone where vowels are ground as flat as limestone pavement and the glottals stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so um, I live in Barnard Castle now and I've got a job in Darlington. So every morning I drive west to east into the sun and every night I drive back into the sun. <laughs> and I often have the sun in my eyes and I get to see some lovely sunrises and sunsets. And I drive along the A67, which is a wonderful road across the spine of a hill with fantastic views on either side. So this poem is, uh, is about my commute to work and it's called The Love Song for the A67. <laughs> The sun is a god today, and all the bare-fingered trees his supplicants. What he lacks in heat, he compensates with colour. I drove to work today on roads of gold. Today he presides over all his meetings. He instructs the weather, calls the wild winter to account. When both of us have worked our hours, we'll head for home, the sun and I, westering into the dark. Um, so our house in Barnard Castle um, backs onto fields and the local farmer, um, sometimes there's sheep in the field there and sometimes there's not. And today I looked out and uh, I saw the first of this year's lambs. So I thought I'd read this one. Um, I go out and have a chat with the sheep sometimes, especially when I come home from work. I lean over the fence and have a, a little word with them. Um, and we've got to know them sort of across the year. 
So this is, uh, was written last summer. Sheep in midsummer. The sheep are back in the top field again. Their clean backs narrowed by shearing, heads down to crop rich pasture. They were here in March with lambs so new they still had navel strings and butted their dam's flanks feeding. I rescued one, lost across the hedge, its small hooves planted in our neighbour's garden, held him by his round and solid chest, through his thin fleece felt his small heart thump as I lifted him back to his mother's safekeeping. There will come that terrible night in August, when the lone yows bleat upon the darkness, their grown lambs shepherded into tall trucks and borne away, stumbling to market. It's cheerful for you, Morbs, that one. <laughs> so, um, as I mentioned, I work in Darlington, and I've got a job in this company that does research in science and engineering. Um, a lot of the managers are ex-ICI guys. Um, and last year they held this State of the Nation Day and we all went off to this posh hotel, about 250 of us, and sat and listened to the senior managers and um, talking about how the company was getting on. And uh, all the managers who got up to speak had something in common and I wonder if you can guess what it was. This is called A Woman's Place is in the Audience. <laughs> Nine white men on a podium with your collars unbuttoned and your sleeves undone. Congratulate yourselves. You're so relaxed you can communicate with the working class. Nine white men, you tell anecdotes, you can relate to us. You make finance fun. You take questions from the floor, but there's one that nobody here will dare to ask. Nine white men, you are every kind of engineer. You use PowerPoint. You promise us you won't bore us all by making your talks too numerical. Nine white men, I'm finding it hard to tell you or your bullet points apart. Come on and tell us how proud you are of all the great work we have done. <laughs> Not bitter. <laughs> um, and so finally, this poem is a sort of bookend with the first one. And it reflects on the differences in landscape between the Thames Valley and the Chiltern Hills where we lived for 20 years, more or less and the North Pennines, where I now found myself. Yeah. Um, so before I read this, I'd just like to thank you all for coming tonight and for listening. And thanks again to Mr. Morbs for letting me uh, share my poems with you in a lovely little pamphlet. I've got the uh, large print version here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this last poem is just called Relocation. So the place I thought was home turned out to be somewhere we were passing through. And we have traded all the grey, cream, red of flint, brick, render for this buttered stone. Beechwoods for bare hills, accents clipped like lawns for vowels as broad as fells. The green-spined lane became a hard grey road. The kites are hawks, and the placid boating river is a rocky fall past a castle keep. Life pitches our tent in a different portion of the desert. We make it ours. I can no longer tell you where my heart is. Thank you. Thank you.